I was noticing the machines, the tuners, yeah. are Grovers, right. the sealed Grovers, which would have probably not been the originals. No. What do you recall? No, when, when I acquired this from, from Joe Walsh, who insisted that I bought it, and he was right, <laughs> um, it had been refinished, and possibly one of the reasons why I wanted to sell it was the fact that maybe it didn't feel the same to him when he got it back. Um, and my feeling is that, because um, this is a little hazy, this is a long while ago, but for the sheer fact that these holes haven't been filled in, I've got a feeling that I would have changed the uh, machine heads that were the production ones to the Grover, which I was more familiar with from my um, Les Paul Custom. They're more sensitive and, uh, boy, they've held up from all those days back then anyway, so there we go, it says it all. So, uh, essentially for tuning issues, just to... Purely for that, yeah, because, you know, a three-piece like Led Zeppelin, you couldn't have a, a slipping machine head or something well, like can't that. be fiddling around too much. Yeah. Um, the other thing I noticed immediately in, in uh, looking at this was the push-pull knob. Right. Which, it's, um, that one. Yeah. So is that... Something that you've had done? And well, I, I, I customised um, my number two Les Paul, which again is, it, it, you know, is, is a real old vintage one too. However, uh, that gave any combination of all of these. But it's a little fussy because all of these were push pulls and had switches here and everything. But the reality of it was the thing that I found most important to me was the fact that you could reverse the phase on these. Mm -hmm. And by reversing the phase, you get the. Uh, you get um, a close approximation to the sort of sound that Peter Green would get. Oh, yeah. And also, uh, certainly, B.B. King. Yeah. Now, whether some of these things came out um, with the pickups wide out of phase, um, you know, accidentally, I don't know. But I've got it on purpose, so there we go. Do you use it for specific oh, like sounds or oh, songs? Yeah, oh, yeah, or? yeah, yeah. Really? Yeah, I used it quite a, quite a bit. So this is on recordings and things. Yeah. So that so is it's tool. just as simple as that. You just pull it out, and there it is. You've got it reverse, pop it back in, and you, you get the full full whack of it again. Mm. And th this guitar has also got a very very slim neck, mm. and I think people probably speculate as to whether it came that way or you've had it done. Is that something that you had? I didn't. Down? I I I didn't have it done. This guitar has sort of been. It's one of those guitars that really was meant to come my way. Um, because, as I say, Joe Walsh insisted that I bought it, and he was right. It came as it was. The only, only change that I made to it was, was that, really, in essence, the, the tuning sure. heads. But it already came with this, with, um, this scallop neck. But I've got to slim. say that I inherited a guitar from Jeff Beck, which was the Yardbirds guitar, um, which was another brand, I might add. Mm -hmm. But the, rea the thing of that is that that was another one that came to me, and that had a very shallow neck as well. So yeah. it's as though these, you know, somehow this came to me that way as well. So it always was. I mean, even way back in the days when uh, uh, Eric, for instance, was playing one, it was always known as like a really user-friendly guitar, the Les Paul. And, uh, and the, it, you know, the slim neck probably suits your style nicely then, eh? Well, I played around the fact that it was what it was, so that's it, I mean, you know. Hmm. Very interesting. So this guitar is essentially irreplaceable to you? Oh, absolutely. This is... Uh, I mean, you know, you could say that about any guitars, but as far as I, I go, it's absolutely that's the irreplaceable. One. It's so that's unique. The, that's the one that gets it's, in... You know, it's... It's my mistress, it's my wife, mm. and the great thing is it doesn't beat you up for alimony. <laughs> <laughs> well, but it's not leaving you, so there you go. <laughs> oh, great well, stuff. it's not leaving me, no. No. Well, we're going to be very proud to, to make as accurate a duplication. But it's going, to have, it's, it's going to be having some sons and daughters, <laughs> and they won't need paternity, neither. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, we'll take good care of it. Yeah, yeah okay, right. All right, well, great stuff. There you go. All right.